Welcome back my friends for another fun reloading video. Today we're going to be working on some 357 Magnum. Lots of you guys recommended H110 in a couple of the first videos of the series here. So we're going to run with some H110 and we're going to get started. The brass we're using is once fired, I believe, range pickup arms core. I went ahead and uniformed and trimmed all these to the same length. We cleaned up the primer pockets and the case mounts there after we trimmed them all. So these are all good to go here. These are the Lee 358150-1R. As you can see, just a round nose, 150 grain. These came out at about 153 grains. So that's all cool. They are sized to 358. We have Eastwood Ford Blue with Ruby Red here and then the Ford Blue and Signal White. We're gonna be using the CCI number 550 Magnum small pistol primers. Then as you can see, they're identical to the 500s, the 450s, the 400s, pretty much all of them, they all look the same, but aren't they beautiful? Anyways, that's what we're going with. And we're going to be loading up maybe 20, 25 rounds here for the range. So let's go ahead and get started. First we have to expand our case mouth, so we're going to be using the Lee Universal Case Expanding Die. This is my go-to for any expanding needs. All of the included powder through expanders. I uh, don't like them as much, but they work if you're throwing powder on the press. It's sort of handy, but I much prefer the Universal Die here, so we're going to throw that into the rock chucker over here and get started. We've got our number one shell holder. We're going into the rock chucker down below. We have our case expanding die with the proper insert and order of the two. We'll just get this started here and then we'll grab some brass. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these in the loading block here so I'm not trying to fight and get all these out one at a time. Okay, we'll just grab our first case and I'll probably have to raise this lock ring but first we'll raise our ram here. See when we contact, hold the lock ring in place. You can move the die at the same time. There, we're just touching. So I'm gonna lock this down now. And now I have adjustment here, up top. On a more, we'll take a look here. I might have gone just a tad too far. That actually feels pretty good. And it's holding our bullet in there. Aha! Let's go with that, let me do let me do one more and we'll see how it feels. All oh, that'll just work just fine. So we'll be able to crimp that without overworking our brass open and close and open and close after several firings here. So let me run through these. So it never hurts to fine tune your setup while you're working. I've just been kind of backing this out a little bit at a time and still trying to fit a bullet. And I think we got the most efficient expansion we can achieve without overworking the case there. So let's just have a look here. Still fits in, but not quite as much bell as earlier. So yeah, again, just to extend case life, and since we trimmed them all evenly, they're all going to be getting the same amount of flare open and then the same amount of crimp back closed. So we should be rocking and rolling here in just a minute. So I'll get back with you here when we're done expanding and we'll get on to priming the brass. So here we are with the Lee Ram Prime. We'll just get our shell holder up in the shell holder holder there. And now it is time to prime our brass. And for today, I'm still gonna dump them into our high-speed tactical match grade primer flip tray. However, we don't actually need to flip them or do anything like that because I'm gonna be picking them up and putting them into the Ram Prime here. So it doesn't matter how they end up orientated in our tray. But anyways, I only needed half of those. Crap. Anyways. 
I'm gonna do all 50 cases here, but we're only gonna load up half of them so we can save the other half for a different powder later down the road. But anyways, let's get on with it. Oh yeah. Oh, beautiful. I always start at the wrong end. See how I start here and then I do this and then I fill it up and then it's gonna run into that. I need to go put one here and then grab this guy, eh? Right. Remember I was talking about workflow on that other video the other day? It's all about your workflow, folks. Yes. I love how it's just a pistol cartridge and I'm treating it like a freaking high speed precision long range sniper rifle. I'm not dogging anyone that's into that sort of stuff because it's fun too, man. It's fun too, man. But I'm just loading up some revolver and lever reaction loads here. Which may or may not be for taking out some dares this year. Who knows, yeah? I might see how stupid fast we can get some uh, XTPs running out of the lever gun. Would that uh, effectively take a deer? I remember seeing some data, 1,800, 19, 2,000 feet per second with, uh, I think, 140 grain projectile. Might have been a little lighter than that. But I'm still new here today. We're just going to be doing some, uh, you know, mid-range to maybe the... Uh, upper quartile of the load data just so we can we can feel the 357 but I'm not going to be pushing for maximum pressure here today which is probably dumb using H110 because everybody says oh you gotta push them hot it likes to be a very full case But I think we'll be fine. I'm just gonna be shooting some lead here. Plinking for the most part. We'll do a couple groups on paper. And I may or may not have a chronograph for this weekend. So that could be cool to get some actual velocity data. Anyways, I'm going to get all this stuff primed up and then figure out how to get the remainder back into the box and that little tray without spilling crap everywhere or contaminating them with my dirty, gross, greasy fingers. Come here. There we go. It's like they don't want to get used. Poor little fellers. Oh, don't put it upside down. I always prefer um, expanding before priming just so there's one less operation going on with it in the case. That's one less or you know less amount of time for me to screw something up or possibly contaminate it somehow or whatever but or you know even for safety reasons you know, case prep without a primer in it is safer than case prep with a primer in it. Got a few more here. Oh yeah. 
These are going in just nicely. I haven't noticed anything too loose. They all have about the same amount of pressure so far. But maybe over time we can see how they stretch as far as trim length and maybe we can I don't have a primer pocket gauge, but I was gonna say maybe there's a way we could gauge whether or not our primer pockets are loosening. Otherwise, we'll fire them until they split or something more likely. I'm never going to anneal them, so every time we fire this, it's stretching, it's um, getting expanded and then it's getting crimped back down. So this little case mouth here gets a lot of work every single time we load it. So we'll probably see a split before we possibly even have to trim or get loose primer pockets. So that's why we minimize our neck expansion and crimping. However, you're gonna want a nice hefty crimp here from what I've been told. Especially with H110 and the Magnum powders, um, you need that crimp. It helps build the initial pressure for that consistent ignition. Am I done? Concentrate dummy, you're busy making videos. Anyways, yeah, a heavy crimp helps with your consistent ignition using these magnum primers and powders and these heavier loads here, which we may not experience today. Again, we're just going with some light ones. You put it the wrong way, guy. Okay, here we go. Let's flip them over. Now we can see that it's primed. Last few here. And then again, yeah, I gotta figure out how to get these primers back up in here. Look at that, look at it. It's a thing of beauty. Yeah, I can't whistle or sing. Sorry, you just had to experience that. Now we can watch old Dum Dum spill primers everywhere. I've never really done this, but let's just kind of knock them off and see where they go, right? <laughs> Come on. Come on. We use the old vibratory action. There we go. We got them on the tray. And now it's kind of the same. Oh, we lost one already. I was going to say it's the same as trying to flip them, except now you got to get them in a hole. And then they have to lay down. Whatever. I bet we can still close it, but I don't want to be fingering all my primers here and contaminate them potentially, but that's not very well packed. <laughs> okay. Anyways, there we go. We got it. Woo! So we can see the Lee manual here does not have data for a 150 grain round nose, but we can pretty much extrapolate somewhere to start. Um, they have tons of information between 158 grains. And it's always good if you don't have information for the bullet you need, go to the next higher uh, weight class and then work down from there a little bit. And that'll give you a little bit of headroom because this is accounting for more pressure based on that extra weight of the projectile. So if you start lower than that, it should be a safe starting point. So let's take a look here. So we're looking for H110. There's nothing here with the 158 lead, 158 jacketed. Continuing on with 158 lead. Still no H110. 158 copper plated, nope. And then 158 grain XTP. Lee um, organizes their data by velocity. So H110 here is actually the very top. It's the same as 296, so we can see a maximum of 16.7 grains 
and that's going to give us 1591 out of a four inch handgun it says so we can start around 15 it says maximum of 16.7 I'm going to go ahead and write that down and then we'll take a look and see if we have some other sources. So here in our Lyman cast manual, we have a 150 grain 358477 H110 listed with 16.3 up to 17 grains. And that's giving 1351. We have a 155 grain cast bullet, 15 to 15.7. Another 158 grain. H110, 14.4 to 15.9, and a 160 grain option here, 15.8 to 16.5. So, the general maximum I'm seeing here is 17 grains. However, this 158 grain has a maximum of 15.9. So, if I start between 15 and I can go up to approximately 17. If I jump right in the middle here at 16 grains, I'm gonna see what that looks like as far as case fill compared to a seated bullet. And we'll take a look at the capacity there. So here is our H110. It's a very fine, super dense ball powder. Flows very nice through your measures. And just look at that. Oh, ain't it pretty? Anyways, we're going to get 16 grains of it here in a case and see what it looks like. All right, so we've got 16 grains here. We're going to throw it in our case and see what it looks like compared to our seated dummy round. Sick name drop, by the way, bro. All right, let's come on down here. So there's our case fill. See if we can poke at it. Uh, roughly in there, maybe. Compared to our line, how do we look? Looks like we're below the line. Yeah, still a little bit of room. Not quite compressed, which is a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and seat one here, and we will see if we have any room shaking around in there. We've got our case here. We're going to seat a bullet. It won't be crimped yet, but we'll at least see if we have any room with our powder fill. Because there wasn't any data for this exact bullet. And yes, we do have a little bit of wiggle room. Oh, there it is. You can actually see the base of the bullet. And I would imagine the powder is just below it. But I think that'll be a pretty good starting point here. I'm just going to, you know, run these into the target. And then we'll slowly work up over time for some of Bubba's pissing hot hand loads. All right, so now that we've gone and checked our case fill versus our decided powder... Uh, we're going to go ahead and whip out the Uniflow because I'm not doing any sort of precision rifle work here, like I said. Again, we're going to test for some groups and have some fun, but we can achieve this with a uh, powder thrower, an automatic thrower, things like this that speed up the process. And here we are with our RCBS Uniflow installed via the awesome uh, little Harbor Freight clampy grippy guys. So that's ready to go. We just got to fill it with our powder here. Let's get on with it. Here's another quick look at our H110 from inside the green room. No, we don't need this much powder for, uh, you know, 25 rounds, but I like to have a nice full column of powder. So there's an equal weight every time you go to recharge it. It kind of fills back up the same. Or so we've been told it helps. I'm sure it might. Especially when you get a lot lower, it'll be more inconsistent then. And I believe last time I used this, it was for 22 grains of Shooter's World Heavy Pistol. So I'm going to run it a few times to get it settled in. And we'll see how closely the Heavy Pistol meters to the H110. Just, just because. Just to see what happens. Mainly for my own amusement. Okay, now we'll get this zeroed here. Remember, this is just my crappy scale I use to sort of reference things. So we can't take what it says verbatim. Wow, so H110 is like, what, 4% heavier maybe? Interesting, hmm. 
Anyways, on with the show, we need to uh, greatly reduce this here by about half to get to 16 grains. Actually not half, way less than that, but there's a few turns on it. Hope we didn't do too much. So I'll uh, try it again here a couple times just to settle it down. That looks like way less powder. Okay. We need our 16 grains. I took it all the way down to 12. Dang it. Back out. Uh, let's see what one turn will give us. We are now one turn further out. We'll give it a few bonks to settle in here. Come on, dump out. It's hard to do this with the camera in the way, so sorry. 16 grains, please. And there is 15.9. Let me do five. And that should give us an 80 grain average. See how close we are to 80. Okay, we're exactly a tenth off. So yeah, 15.9. I'll give it just the barely smallest little turn open there. We'll tighten that down. See what we get. Jumping between 15.9 all the way to 16.2. So let's try five throw average. Again, we should have 80. 79.9, that's pretty damn close. I'll take it. Let me just do five more actually and we should see 160. Just for giggles. How accurate is the Uniflow? 159.7 out of 16. So that's uh, really damn close right there, folks. We'll take it. I think we're dialed in. Time to throw these 25 charges and seat some more bullets. So we're ready to go here. We've got this one loaded, so I'll move him down. Get all dummy round out of the way. And then I'll just uh, charge, seat the bullet, set her here and grab a new one and go from there. Wow. And remember, doesn't matter if you double tap or whack it on the way up or the way down or however you want to do it, as long as you do it the exact same every time. There's a nice looking bullet. Should I keep them all the same color here or should we mix it up? Hmm. I don't know. I'll just. I'll just randomly grab them and see how we do. These bullets actually sit in there quite nicely. It is a uh, flat base, so that's nice. But just that little bit of expansion we put on there was enough. Beautiful. Oh gosh. Lost one. So we found our bullet. We're good to go here. 16 grains is actually more than I use for my 300 black hat with a 150 grain bullet. Actually, I think it's for the Hornady 150 grain, uh, you know, FMJ. I went with 16 grains of H110. So actually this is the exact same load as my 300 blackout I've done before. So weird, I'm putting that in an actual pistol. Lots of you guys really, really liked H110. So I figured we gotta start with the good stuff. And next we're gonna probably use 2400 or start using some Shooter's World Heavy Pistol because I have the most of that. And it's the cheapest and I can, you know, work up all my plinking loads and then save the more expensive exotic powders for more exotic loads. Know what I'm saying? 
But for general plinking and low cost stuff like that, I'm gonna use the Shooter's World Heavy Pistol if I can, uh, if I can help it. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick spot check on the powder thrower. I'm gonna zero out the scale with the case here. And I want to be within one tenth of 16. So let's go. Sixteen point zero on the nose. That's what I'm talking about, even with the crappy scale giving me confidence. That's good to know. Our Uniflow is also really good at H110. So up next is crimping here, and I want to do a nice firm crimp around that so we have a great stable ignition to get to that first wave of pressure nice and evenly every single time we pull the trigger which will hopefully give us some more consistent ammo ignition and we can achieve this consistent crimp because we trimmed all of our cases so that's going to be awesome and here we have one more bing bang See, don't even have a bullet in it, you freaking dummy. Wow. <laughs> Bing bang seated. Oh, it sounds like a little shaker. Congratulations, you've just loaded your first 25 rounds with 357 Magnus, sir. How do you feel? Well, actually, we still have to crimp, so hang on just a minute, sir. And actually, I'm going to get rid of all this powder first to get it out of my way so I don't run into it and spill a half a pound of powder all over the floor like a dum-dum. So it's time to empty our powder measure here. I just cut the bottom half here off of a cheap dollar store funnel and it fits in my bottles, it fits in the Dillon powder measures, it fits anywhere I want to put it. <laughs> Anyways, we will pop these, make sure you're still holding firmly on your Uniflow. Now we are loose. Need to put these down somewhere. That's good for now. Now that we have our Uniflow, we'll pull off our lid and it goes right back in. Super easy. Then you do this a few times once you can, you know, Hold it in front of a camera. Run that a few times, we'll knock on this. Get any little guys out, but also, on these older ones, I don't know if the new ones can do it. Urgh. You kinda work on that and he falls out. Any other staticky pieces we can get out? You can see a little bit sitting right there. I'm not too worried about it. I just want to make sure it's out of here so it doesn't contaminate the next thing I want to load. So yeah, get that all cleared out and we can put this away as well as lid up our, you know, gold here. Put it on the back side of the bench so we can't spill nothing. All right, so we just need to install our crimping die real quickly. And here's our dummy round actually we'll use to set it up. I always like to just run the die down onto the case rather than raise it up, lower it till it hits the shell holder, or come off a turn or go down a turn or whatever the instructions say. I just like to feel it out. So there's about a quarter turn from contact. Looks pretty light. Let's go just a little bit heavier. So once I contacted the case, we're maybe three-eighths or half a turn. I want to go just a tad bit more here. So yeah, maybe a half a turn now. Now we're crimping here. I think that looks just great. Good sufficient crimp. Hopefully we're not overworking our brass. Again, that was our dummy, so let's actually try. See if we fit in the gun, right in, and right in and out. Woo, almost lost him. 
Anyways, there we go. That's what we're gonna roll with here today. I'll just get these seated and in the box they will go. Oops. While it's up here, let's actually lock this down so it doesn't drift on us. And then we'll just verify this first one here. I could probably just seat them a tad deeper next time to get it all the way into that groove. But I think we're going to be good here. We're still in it. So we'll run through these real quick and I'll be right back. And one more. Beautiful. So here we are. We've got our 25 all loaded up, crimped, ready to go. We plunk tested them through the gun. And now it's time to hit the range, folks. And just like that, we are back from the range. Unfortunately, no range footage, but we got all the data we needed. I uh, actually got a chronograph, so woohoo! We have data now that uh, is actually useful, other than, yeah, here's a target. So aside from, yeah, here's a target, that's 25 shots at 7 yards, I think. Pretty much all right in there. We had a couple outliers, obviously, but as a whole, I would say that's pretty darn good shooting. Obviously, the holes are nice and round, and there's no keyholing or anything weird, so that's good as well. And here we see 25 shots on target. Only 10 of the 25 worked with the chronograph. That's thanks to the good old H110 Fireball you might have heard about before. And I was a little close to the chronograph, being my first time using it. So I ended up scooting back, you know, a good five or six feet. And that's how I got those 10 shots to end up working. Anyways, we ended up with a 1267 average. Our spread was 115. SD of 33. Yeah, not the greatest. Again, we did have some case capacity left where we could squeeze a bit more powder in there and maybe try that because I've heard H110 likes to be right up on the bottom of the bullet there. But here we've noted the primers were starting to flatten. Not totally flat, but just starting to flatten. And then we got the fireball because of unburnt powder. So let's take a look at our brass here. So here's a look at our brass. You can see they're starting to flatten out but still nice and round around the perimeter. It's not flattened out into that empty space there. However, we're getting pretty close to max pressure here. Pretty clean burning. Not a whole lot of soot around there. And all the unburnt powder, you know, all went out the barrel into the fireball. But yeah, they're all pretty clean. And they all look pretty much the exact same. So I think we still have a little work to do as far as getting this load dialed in. We can see it's pretty good in the accuracy department if I can do my part. I think as far as our charge here, remember seeing data up to 17 grains, but that seems pretty hot. I'm going to go up to 16.3 as well as down to 15.7 and see if this point of impact shifts at all. We're going to see if we can get that to line up with our point of aim by changing our charge before we were to change our sights and see if we can keep the same accuracy as well as see if we can tighten up some of the spreads here with our velocity. But again, I'm only going to go up three more tenths and we're going to keep looking at our pressure closely because I feel like we're getting pretty near the top end here. But maybe that'll be enough to fill up the rest of that case and we might be able to tighten up some of those numbers. Maybe shift the point of impact where we want it to go. We will have to see. So that's going to do it for this episode here, folks. Stay tuned for the next one where we work on our velocity here and see if uh, raising and lowering our charge weight here just a little bit can tighten up some of these numbers as well as maybe shift our point of impact. But otherwise, you know, our brass looks great. Uh, target looks pretty good. That's a nice little hole there. It goes where you point it. Thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video. Have a good one.